if you make it to a national science here, all the projects are good. So what makes, what makes one project stand over the other is the presentation and the visual display. Definitely some ideas are better than others. Some people have worked better than others, but you know, when you're competing, when you're competing for the top spots and all the projects are good, communication skills is everything. And we have like an actual outline that we planned out. And if you make a mistake, you don't want to show it. You want to know that, you want to tell them that you know your stuff, that you've studied and you know what you're talking about. When they ask you the questions, you're not thinking about your presentation anymore. You're actually thinking about the questions, so we'll give you more time to answer the questions, actually. First, I built three different rotational sensors and they all use different techniques for measuring rotational movement. The second one was I characterized them. I compared the vitamin C concentrations in organically grown oranges versus conventionally grown oranges because I find for the average consumer there's not a lot of information comparing the two. During a science fair, you can be required to make up to 15 oral presentations. They should be no more than 10 minutes in length and it's important to leave time for any of the judges' questions. The more you rehearse, the better. We rehearse it to, first of all, to ourselves until we get comfortable with it. Then uh, we rehearse it to our parents, see what they say. The advantages of rehearsing is actually like knowing your stuff and reminding yourself over and over that you're the expert and no one, like, no one else knows about it but you. So you have to be confident in yourself and what you're going to say. Your logbook and your written report are an important part of your science fair presentation. The judges will want to see them. Another good idea is a one-page written summary that you can give to the judges and to others.